This is Vern Benham Grimsley on campus. When someone smites you on one cheek, turn the other also. He said, pray for those who despitefully use you, bless those who curse you, love your enemies, return evil done to you with good. <laughs> and think about some of the other things he said. I came not bringing peace, but I came with a sword. Also, wait, one at a time. Let me get a few more in here. You zapped in several at once. <laughs> also, unless you hate your mother and your father and your brother and your sister and all who would disagree with me, you cannot be one of me. How come, uh, how come Christ and his peace-loving apostles were armed? At least one of them had a sword. It's mentioned in the Bible when the uh, officials of the law came to pick up the... Uh, I would say this, though. Jesus said at that very point when it was disclosed and discovered that Simon Peter had one, Jesus said, he who lives by the sword will die by the sword. He was teaching, I believe, the way of spiritual peace and compassion. If that's, if that's true, why did Jesus say, I come bringing a sword? That was the symbol of division. If you oh, look at symbol, yes. No, well, let me say because in the context of being honest, in the context, if you go back and read that scripture, you find that what Jesus was saying was the following. He said, "When some people in a family believe my message and others do not, it will bring a sword of division because their loyalties are going to be divided." And in that sense, he came. Bringing a sword. Yes, he did. He said, "I have come to set mother-in-law against mother, father against son, and brother against brother." Because if people are serving God, some of them, and other people not... That guy, he didn't have to come to do mother-in-law is always against daughter in law <laughs> Unfortunately, you're not being very honest, because you know as much about ancient uh, history of Israel as I do, and you know very well that the Messiah was a political figure as much as a religious figure. He was supposed to conquer, reunify Israel, conquer the surrounding nations, and establish a theocracy. When he said, I came bringing a sword, he met a sword. And the but Messiah, when the context, the one context, what'd you say? Sort of truth, and this sword of truth would cut through deception. Let me Precisely, Let yes, me the sword of truth. How about <laughs> I have somebody on my side, yes. Let, okay, now, to finish, unfortunately, there's no evidence at all that people those days took that phrase, I come bringing a sword, symbolically. Uh, the apostles did go around armed. Most of the apostles of the various messiahs running around Palestine at that time went armed. The apostles of Let Simon... Let me say, though, that armed. there are several the places the in the teachings of Jesus armed. where, in fact, he deliberately says you have to take him symbolically. For instance, one time Jesus said, you must be born again. Nicodemus said, does that mean I have to enter my mother's womb again? And Jesus says, this is not another encounter with the maternity ward or the obstetrician, he was talking about a spiritual renaissance in a person's life. And because of this, he was saying, don't have to take everything literally that I say, because some of these things were metaphorical. He said the kingdom of... Wait a minute. What you, wait a minute. what you mean is, and it seems that what you're saying is, is that if it's convenient for you to interpret a statement of Christ as symbolical, you'll do it as symbolical. No, but when Jesus himself says to interpret it the other way, you ought to. Wait a minute. And if it's convenient for you to interpret a particular statement that Christ or others made in the Bible as literal, you will interpret it as literal, according to your convenience and direct opposition to the statement of Christ himself that you should not twist the scriptures to your own purposes for that is what the scribes and the hypocrites do and that seems to be what you're doing twisting but the, scriptures. the analogy which I gave was a point where Jesus himself declared that he was not saying something that was to be taken literally but to be taken metaphorically namely being born again that he was not talking about physiological birth but he was talking about spiritual birth What'd you say? You're out of tape. <laughs> but not out of thoughts, yes. Like believing in the Bible or something, I may believe in mysticism, I won't, and I may believe in God in some form, but I won't believe in the Bible. Would you say that you have an inkling of a feeling that there is a spiritual reality in the universe? Yeah, I, I believe that there has to be. I believe that too, and I think that it is not necessary, in fact, Jesus himself, since we were just talking about the teachings of Jesus, he was not talking about a doctrinaire, dogmatic way of life. In fact, he himself was proclaiming a very simple thing, that it's not necessary for a person to nod his head to all the hidebound ecclesiastical concepts down through the century to find God and have this experience. Would you concur with that? Yeah, well, I'll tell you one reason I think that it's important to study the teachings of Jesus, that here's a man who was there. If I want to find out what London was like in the times of Samuel Pepys, I read Samuel Pepys' diary, I suppose. And in the same sense, Jesus of Nazareth was a man who uniquely was God-conscious, was a highly spiritually developed person, and that therefore it is important to study his teachings. 
Uh, I agree, it, and I agree that it's probably equally as important to study other people who are probably equally enlightened all over the world, rather than concentrate a study on Jesus Christ. Jesus was calling man to the quest after truth, and not just into a dogmatic and narrow or sectarian viewpoint, because he was saying, for example, the truth makes a person free. Would you agree with that? Uh, yeah. No, I think it's outmoded. It should have been abolished by educating the very young and... Uh, Religion could be abolished by education, you think? I mean, it should be. It should be. It's uh, totally false. How does a person explain, then, that such men as, oh, Albert Einstein and some of the most educated people around are highly religious? It's because of his early training. Einstein probably was a little bit uh, uh, religious, believed it. Uh, but he never, he never really expressed his belief. It's impossible to tell from his writings what his beliefs were. And uh, he certainly he was against, uh, as all his writings, his relevant writings show, he was very much uh, of the mind that religion was very harmful. No, he said, I'll give you an example. I'll give you some quotes from Einstein. He said, God is not playing dice with the universe. He said that in every one of his... That's not a religious statement. Yes, it means that the mind that created this universe is a systematic mind. It's an expression. That was just an expression he used. He didn't have... He didn't... Uh, use that to uh, express that he uh, had any concept of God at all because I'm sure he didn't have. Let me give another of his statements then. He said that when he made a great discovery in theoretical physics, he did so by the following methodology of putting himself in God's shoes, so to speak, and asking himself, how would God have done this? How would God have created physical reality? He, used, he never used God, uh, the, uh, the use of the concept in that way. For instance, he was of, of the opinion that there was no rational force behind the universe or controlling the universe in any way. This is the important thing, that there is no rational force behind the universe. At Princeton, I'll give you... The laws of nature and not by any rational force. And everybody, everybody who is intelligent already believes that for... The, the best refutation of what you have just proposed, the best refutation of what you've just said is written in stone at Princeton University where Albert Einstein was of course on the faculty and it's on a fireplace, a stone fireplace, one of Einstein's quotes and it goes as follows. The quote is well known but it has nothing to do with his idea or concept. Wait, no, well Einstein said it though sir, he really did. Uh, what is it? It's not relevant to the, to the question. It's, it's relevant to the question and, and here's the quote. God doesn't exist. This is the, thing that the quote on that Princeton University fireplace said by Einstein was as follows, God is not a prankster, but a mathematician. He was saying that this is an organized universe, that it's not a simply blind and unreasoned cosmos. And it seems to me that all of physics, all of... He believed, uh, that uh, there was no rational... Uh, uh, control or uh, thought or mind behind the universe. What'd you say? His idea and not uh, your interpretation because that's something you always have to face. Well, because I, I'm acquainted with what Einstein's no, thought you're was. acquainted with what you believe, no, you know. No, I'm acquainted with his ideas on that. He, he, he didn't express his ideas very often, but when he did, well, you he, was, he was anti-religious. Anti I think that Einstein was a man who... In the sense, in the sense of the existence of God, and this is, this is, the, very, this is the question the of us have to be gotten rid of. You see, the, the belief in a rational force behind, behind the universe, which is completely, you see, at the best it would be only a theory. But That's if you look at the universe, you see a universe which is rationally understandable, which makes sense. In other words, where there are laws of cause and effect continually going on. Would you agree? Yes. And Einstein was simply saying that it didn't appear to be nothing but one huge, blind, uninterpretable mass, but that there was sense to it. Now, again, a person has a choice along this line, in the same sense that I think a person has a choice to believe himself to be a member in the family of God. But I think all human beings are sons and daughters of God, and all are... <laughs> and what do you think about religion? <laughs> the essence, the essence. <laughs> the essence, yes. How about the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man? Does that sound good? You'll have to explain. That this planet is one family, do you think that? This universe. The universe is one family. The brotherhood of beings, then. Of all essence. Of all essence. All right, shall we take a vote on this? <laughs> a religious program? Yeah. All right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Yes, it is. What radio show is that? It's a syndicated broadcast on several stations, not only in California, but in Oregon and Washington and oh, Indiana. Religion? Yes, right. Religion and philosophy. I think all people are children of God and all men are brothers. Do you think so? Yeah. You do? Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah. Take this man's picture and dip his baby shoe in bronze. I think that's great. Do you think it's going to change the world for people to believe that? Yeah. Well, uh, I can live without it. Do you think it might be more fun to live with it? <laughs> no, not at all. I think it is. I believe, I believe living in a religious way, but not believing in religion. Would that makes sense? Ah, would you say it's a different thing to believe in God than to believe in religion, that those are two different things? Well, I don't believe in God, but I believe in, in living rightly. I believe God believes in you. All right. No, I mean that you're a daughter of God, and you may not know it. Well, he's got too many. He's got too many to look after now. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> too many people for God to look after, like the old lady in the shoe, not knowing what to do and all? Yes, many. Too many. He's got lots of water, but nobody ever uses it anymore. Nobody ever uses the water anymore? Yes, the hippies. The hippies never use water. I believe. Why, they'll leave you some. <laughs> I think God does know all about his children. Jesus said God knows every hair on everybody's head. How does that strike you? Well, all right. You've been listening to On Campus, a non-sectarian, non-denominational public affairs presentation. For free printed transcripts, write